Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, ha I feel like I keep being like, happy quarantine day 500. I don't really know how to start these anymore. I feel like I've essentially become a story time channel or just like a collection of my worst moments. Honestly, I take like a step back after I had done a few of the story times and I'm like, hmm. I'm always like, oh, I wasn't out of control. I was such a good kid. And then I look at these videos and I'm like, you know, maybe you could have been better. But it is also funny because I feel like storytime YouTubers are like notorious for either like exaggerating or making things up to make it more entertaining. And I'm finding myself having to like tone things down and take things out. Anyway, today's story time because yes, we have another one. And honestly, you guys, I think despite this being the most random story ever, I think it's going to be my favorite. I can't think of another one where it's like the entire story is such a roller coaster of just like that would happen to you or you would do that. Honestly, I don't even know what to call it. I don't know what I'm going to title this. I guess it's going to be the time I woke up and oh, I don't want to give anything away though. I guess let's go with the time I blacked out after a Miley Cyrus concert and had a a really messy night. It's a working title. Honestly, there's no good way to sum this up. We should just begin. If we go back to February of 2014, this was when Miley Cyrus was really thriving post Disney days, specifically the Bangers tour. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I loved the Bangers album. Pretty much every song on there. And eh, four by four is honestly a little weird, but you know, can't win them all. Anyway, was so excited for this concert, but I honestly didn't have a ton of friends that were super into Miley Cyrus. And I think the tickets were not cheap. And a lot of the time for concerts, especially with something like that, you aren't buying it like the day before. It's like you're buying these tickets months in advance. The two girls that I ended up buying the tickets with happened to be, I guess we must've been like drunk out one night talking about it. And we all thought it was a good idea, bought the tickets and then three months later, we were like, oh yeah, we did that. But already the first kind of like weird thing about this story is that the two girls that I was gonna go to this concert with weren't my super close friends. One of them I was closer with than the other, but both of them were girlfriends of two of my guy friends at the time. By the time the concert rolled around, one of them was no longer dating my friend and we definitely like didn't take her side in the breakup. It wasn't like a really bad breakup, but we didn't hang out afterwards. So the three of us go to this concert. It was a little awkward that the other girl was coming too, mostly just because she didn't see like she really wanted to. So the night begins at the girl's apartment who I'm closer with and we do a little pregame there and then we take our Uber over to Staples Center. We all lived in like West LA, Brentwood area and Staples Center is like downtown. So not super close, but that's where the concerts are. We get there, we meet up with two of my other friends. They didn't have seats with us, but we like met up with them to get drinks and stuff before because obviously we needed to um, continue drinking after our pregame where we already got pretty drunk. Also just like, I don't know about you guys, at concerts, I get way too drunk, mostly because it's not super easy to go get refills. And since for the most part, I only drink beer, every time I'm going to get a beer, I'm buying two. And usually they're like tall boys at concerts and I want as much as possible. So then I don't have to keep getting up to go buy more. So I always do that thinking that like these will last me a long time, but like if the beer's in my hand, I'm gonna be drinking it. So then the next thing I know, I've drank both of the beers during the time that I should have drank in like half of one. And then I do go get refills, but obviously I'm not gonna just refill one. I'm gonna get two more because that seems like a good idea. This just is like a regular pattern of behavior that I exhibit at concerts apparently. Well, um, this concert was definitely no different. I uh, think if anything, I maybe got a little more drunk because like it's a Miley Cyrus concert concert where she's talking about getting fucked up in all of her songs. We were living our dreams. Uh, we didn't have great seats, so I honestly couldn't tell you much about the concert itself. I don't think I could actually see much. <laughs> If you're like, this story is so boring, I swear it gets much more entertaining. I'm just giving you some context. Some other context that I just find funny. Because it was a Miley Cyrus concert, I was like super rebellious. I was gonna wear my shirt that had a weed leaf on it, which, oh my God, I still have it. Wait, what's this was my super edgy shirt that I wore. Um, I honestly could not tell you last time I've worn it, probably that concert. I don't think I was really on camera yet, but I was still like, ooh, I don't know, should people know I smoke? And I was like super paranoid about everything. But you know, it was a Miley concert and I felt like, love that I was so self-conscious about wearing a shirt with like, weed on it in LA. I just, like, that was a huge decision that I wore that. And now I'm like, it's a fucking shirt with a weed leaf on it. Not like I was like walking around smoking a blunt. Anyway, how times have changed. Last thing about the concert that is super relevant, but it's just 
funny because she remembers this too because we were friends at the time. Megan was also attending this concert and this was also like in the prime of Megan's beauty guru days. It was so crazy. I felt like that whole era of beauty gurus, they had so many brand deals and it wasn't even just brand deals that it was like, oh, we'll pay you. I feel like they just got to go to so many things. Like this in particular, I don't remember what brand sent them, but it was her and several other YouTubers. And I remember we were texting because we knew we were both there. And she's like, where are you sitting? And I'm like, whatever the nosebleed numbers are. And then she's meanwhile like, oh, haha, -ha, I'm on the floor. So I remember already being jealous that she had these amazing seats. But then do you want to know who she was sitting by you guys? This was the Miley Cyrus concert where this happened. Katy Perry was literally sitting right in front of her. Here's the picture of Megan that she sent me during the concert to show me that Katy Perry was by her. I just know that I was really drunk and we were texting like the whole night trying to meet up. We never did. But honestly, I'm still jealous she was sitting near Katy Perry. Okay, now moving on to the interesting part of the night. So the concert ends. We leave. Uh, the one girl that is no longer dating my friend that we were with that had been feeling like a little awkward the whole time. As soon as the concert's over, she's gone. Literally in the crowd outside the Staples Center. We're like, where'd she go? And all of a sudden you look over and she's just like, bye guys. And she just I'm left with the other girl that I came with and then my two friends that we had met up with once we got there. Four of us hop in an Uber to go over to meet up with a bunch of our friends in Santa Monica, which is like back on our side of town. At this point, I couldn't tell you how drunk they are. I'm just on the cusp of a blackout. So we're in this Uber and going from downtown LA to Santa Monica, it's a pretty long drive, but um, apparently we needed to, I don't, now thinking about it, I'm unsure why we needed to stop, but like we had asked the Uber driver, I guess, if we could stop. I think this was like before you could add in like a second stop, like on the Uber app. I don't know if we wanted to like pick someone up or drop someone off or what, but apparently we were trying to get him to make two stops and this Uber driver was absolutely not having it. I will also throw out there, I don't know if one of the girls that I was with was being particularly rude when she was asking, cause I, genuinely don't remember. I know that I personally am like overly nice to Uber drivers, even when they're rude to me because like they're driving me and I feel like I just don't like conflict. They could be driving the wrong way. And I'm like, oh, I don't know, are you sure? Apparently one thing led to another and he got very upset, pissed off enough that we were getting off at the exit to go to Santa Monica, which once you get off the freeway, we still had miles to go. He decides that he's not going to finish this trip and he's not gonna do either of the stops we requested. He is instead going to kick us out of the car while we're on the uh, off ramp to the freeway because that's safe. Like honestly thinking about like, I don't care what we did. Not okay, not appropriate. Take us to where we're going. Like just don't make the second stop if that's such a big deal. So that's where the night begins to escalate. So from the freeway off ramp, we uh, somehow get a replacement lift that comes and picks us up and then takes us to uh, one of the locations that we were trying to get the other one to go to, which apparently was Busby's, which is a bar that's in like West LA. I'll tell you right now. I mean, honestly, this was all in 2014 and I was drunk for all of it. I don't remember a lot of it anyway, but I have read all of the messages that I sent the next morning. And according to Morning After Lily, she doesn't remember even going to Busby's really. That's all a blur. I mentioned I was on like the cusp of a blackout. Yeah, I think that uh, cusp was reached perhaps when we were switching cars on the freeway. But anyway, we get into our new lift and it actually completes our ride. And we make it to Busby's where we meet up with, I wanna say like another 10 people, including the husband of one of the friends that I'm with now. I think at the time they were still just dating, but, but have full circle. Now they're married. Anyway, he will come into play later. But so from the perspective of like past me who wakes up this next morning, that's where my night ends. I don't remember really going to Busby's. I don't really remember seeing anyone else. My night ended in one of those cars and there was nothing memorable about the rest of the night. But then I woke up the next morning. More important here is the condition in which I woke up. I'm someone that like, if I get really drunk, I'm the first person to do an Irish goodbye, which is like, peace out and don't actually say bye to everyone. I will leave alone and go put myself to bed. So I don't usually end up in like some like precarious situation where it's like, oh, I woke up naked in some guy's bed. No, if I'm getting drunk enough that that's gonna happen, like I've already taken myself home because I'm probably going to like either get sick or I'm just like literally asleep. Well, <laughs> this next morning, I can confidently say this was one of the most chaotic mornings of my life. So I wake up on my my couch the next morning, which already a bit strange. I am uh, very confused. The last thing I remember is pretty much being in the Uber. And I also am not wearing any pants alone, which was not strange and made the pantsless thing a little less concerning, but still strange. But don't worry, I still have my weed shirt on from the night before. So needless to say, I'm very confused, disoriented. I start reaching for my phone to like text my friends, be like, uh, what happened last night? Why am I on my couch pantless? I don't think they would be able to answer that question, but you know, I just want to talk to someone. Well, I know it's probably not gonna shock you when I tell you, guess what? My phone was missing. So now I'm not only hungover, pantsless, and um, unsure about so many things, I also don't have a phone. Looked through the whole couch, 
went to my bed. Maybe I put it there. Honestly, who knows what went on in my apartment? I woke up without pants on on the couch, so. But anyway, no phone. So the next step would be like, okay, call it. Well, my roommate, as I've mentioned in past story times, was never there, including this weekend. So couldn't do that. Didn't know any of my neighbors. I guess I could have gone and like knocked on their door and asked to use phone, but I was in no condition to be seeing anyone I knew, much less a stranger. So uh, this is honestly just such a mess of warning. All I could think of when I was like writing down my notes for this is like the amount of times that I've had to argue with the internet provider about how I don't want a phone line and I don't want a landline. This is literally probably the only instance ever that that would have come in handy. So now I'm sitting there feeling uh, very unsure, honestly, about a lot of things, but mainly where my phone was and what I was going to do next. I mean, the pants thing was still kind of weird, but I kind of had to compartmentalize everything so I could problem solve and actually figure out what I was going to do about uh, the scenario at hand. Honestly, I should have just gone back to sleep at this point. <laughs> but anyway, from there, I reached for my computer. Was this laptop, aka my only other form of communication that was going to be able to allow me to reach out to the outside world and figure out where my phone was? Was this form of communication charged? No, of course not. Before you even start wondering, why wouldn't you just charge it? Don't worry, my charger had broken two days before that. It was a weekend. I didn't need my computer. Fuck it. Or I'm going to the Miley Cyrus concert. Yeah, well... And then I went to see if by some grace of God, my roommate had left her charger. No, she hadn't. Of course not. That would have made my life far too simple. So at this point, I am um, phoneless, pantsless, still, memory, List and now computer list as well, apparently. So then I think I uh, sat there for a minute and uh, I would say collected my thoughts, but I think that I was struggling to even have thoughts at this point in time, trying to rack my brain for what I should do next. Like what's the next best course of action to find my phone um, and my dignity as well? Because that was also nowhere to be found. Because it was still kind of early too. I think I woke up at around eight. I didn't necessarily think that my friends that I was with the night before were gonna be awake. and. Most most of my friends lived in apartment complexes that you would have to like enter the building. Like the people have to be awake and you have to be able to call them with, you know, a phone, which I didn't have. So I'm sitting there trying to be like, who's a friend? I could just show up at their place at like 8 a.m. and I would be able to get in and they would answer the door and help me. So I finally land on my friend Josh, who actually ended up replacing the roommate that was never there. He moved into my apartment like months later. One of my very close friends knew him from ASU. He lived not even close, but I had a key to his apartment because this is back in the day when I used to edit for Megan and I was poor and didn't have a good computer and my laptop is super slow, so he would let me use his computer. So I had a key to his apartment and it was like a guest house apartment. So it was somewhere that I could easily access. And I also knew he would have weed, which honestly wasn't gonna like help the scenario, but it would make it a little more bearable at least. Forgot to mention, I may have woken up with no phone and no pants, but I did acquire something, a plush pink mustache that I can only imagine I stole from a lift, I would say the lift, but I don't even remember getting home, so who knows? Why did I steal the mustache? No clue. Why would I want the mustache? No clue. Wasn't something I woke up and was like, oh my God, thank God I stole that last night. I woke up and was like, what the fuck are you doing? To this day, there's still no clarity on why I felt that was necessary, but you know, I did bring it into work and uh, Lisa used it as a decoration on her scooter for like the majority of the time we were at Defy. But anyway, so I grabbed my keys and I start going downstairs and our parking area was like underneath the building. So it's like you had to walk down the stairs, which I've talked about in a story time, the ones that I uh, fell down. Yeah. Well, so you walk down those and then you go to the car area underneath the building. So I'm walking down the stairs, clicking this unlock button and I'm not gonna lie, when I didn't hear any beeping or anything, I started to get a little alarmed. You know what made me even more alarmed? When I turned the corner and saw that there was no car there. You guys? <laughs> I don't know how to describe the uh, sheer panic of like, I, I don't even know if I thought, I don't know. I literally just, it was like sheer panic. It was like, oh no, my car is gone. So at this point to keep track, I have lost <laughs> my phone my pants, my dignity, and apparently now my car. So um, I have no way of contacting anyone. I don't have my car and I'm literally standing there. I think it took me at least five minutes to realize where my car was. Which I know saying that is so absurd, but you guys, I had been through a lot. So finally, I realized that I had driven it to my friend's house to pregame before the concert. I was trying to be responsible and I was like, okay, well, you don't live that far away. I'll just Uber and get it in the morning. Well, guess what, Lily? You can't Uber to get it if you don't have a fucking phone. So instead, guess who had to walk a mile and a half? Because at this point, what else could I do? My only other option was just like wait in my apartment to die. So instead, decided to be proactive and I walked. Normally, I would absolutely have no problem walking that. But I'll remind you, I 
literally just misplaced my car, so I wasn't really in any condition to be walking a quarter of a mile, much less a mile and a half. And despite it being February, it was weirdly really hot outside. And I'm honestly not usually the best of directions. Thank God I remembered where she lived. I don't know if I even really remembered consciously or if it was just like kind of letting myself go on autopilot in this hungover like fugue state that I was in. But somehow I made it and I just remember turning this corner and being like, please be there, please be there, please be there. And I turned the corner and it was as if there was like, like the heavens were shining down on my car. This is the most progress I've made all morning. At least I am now in a vehicle and I have a way of getting to anyone or anywhere that could solve any of the problems that I got myself into. Head to Josh's, which again, it's like a 20 minute drive, not close. Definitely could have found someone closer, but again, I knew he would have weed and be awake. But so I get there and I remember, I think I knocked a little bit, but he didn't answer. So then I just used my key and he was smoking, which like he wasn't supposed to be smoking in the apartment. So he thought it was the landlord knocking or something. So he panics and like, he finally like opens the door while I'm like unlocking it. And he's like pretending to like be half asleep, like putting his shirt on. I would hope your landlord wouldn't just walk into your apartment. And he's like, well, it makes a little more sense than you walking in at 8 a.m. What are you doing? And I'm like, oh, valid point. Hi, I lost my phone and I don't know what to do. And I really need weed. He probably was judging the shit out of me, but he was like, oh, oh gosh, okay. So sets me up on his computer, packs me a bowl, gets me back in a good mindset. And I go on Facebook and start reaching out to the friends that I was with last night to see if they can help me retrace my steps and figure out where my phone might be. It's at this point in my outlining of this whole story that I realize, oh my God, I went on Facebook and was messaging them. I must still have them. Oh my God. I don't know how to express to you how much joy these messages brought me. There's two different ones. And also I talked to my friend Lauren about this afterward. We were laughing because she was like, I think I've lost some of my edge. And I was dying because like, while I read through the conversation, all I could think is like, oh my God, she's being so sassy. And I was being very sassy back. It's just so funny to read now, just because it's so not a conversation that the two of us now would have. I don't know if you guys are ready. I assume I probably woke up around eight. First person I reach out to is my friend Lauren at 9.54 AM. So like, I can't find my phone. She responds. I have to give her credit because that was really fucking funny. I respond, ha ha, stop it. She goes, but really, I'm sorry, that sucks. Where's the last place you had it, Busby's? To which I respond, is that where we were? And she goes, ha ha, yes. And I said, I have no recollection of coming home. My stuff is everywhere. I woke up with no pants on. She goes, how did you get home? You don't know? Was in your bed? I would say that's another story, but it's honestly not even worth telling. I continue. I had no computer charger, so I was literally cut off from the world. And then I saw her other text and I was like, ha ah, no, thank God. I woke up on the couch. She says, ha ah, no pants. I tell her, I decided to go to my friend Josh's in an act of desperation. Surprise, my car is at a net's. She says, oh my God, ha ah. So then I said, so I walked a mile and a half to get there. And she goes, what the fuck? Why did you just walk to my place? Makes zero sense why I wouldn't have gone there. But um, you know, wasn't really thinking straight that morning, I guess. I don't know. That probably would have been a better idea. Probably just as far though. I think both of them were like, her place is probably a mile. The other one's a mile and a half. So it was like, I need to get to my car anyway. Might as well. She then jokes, you needed the comfort of a man. I get it. In reality, I'm like, no, I needed the comfort of uh, weed. And she goes, so what do you mean surprise your car is at Annette's? Did you blackout drive to Annette's last night and then walk back home? with no pants. <laughs> I'm like, no, I drove there before the concert, asshole. You're really not helping my confusion right now. Remember at this point, I still don't know where my phone is. I'm literally sitting at Josh's house on his computer trying to figure out what has happened. And at this point, she has yet to really clue me in on anything. So she goes, huh, would you like me to call Busby's and see if they found a phone with a half of a purple case, which was a dig because I had had one of those like Mophie cases where it charges your phone, but I had lost the bottom piece. So my phone only had half a case on on it at all times because of course my phone only had half a case. Very on brand for me during this time period. But anyway, I said, first of all, fuck you. We were kidding. I wasn't actually being mean. Second of all, yes, that'd be great. And also it's dead. Great. And she said, calling now. You have no idea how you got home? Like you didn't call an Uber or anything? At this point, I'm like, no, Lauren, I don't know how I got home. Cause I don't have my fucking phone. I don't remember anything. Then I realized I did have some kind of clue how I got home. I said, well, she goes, maybe you left it in the cab because she's like using her brain actually. I have a plush pink mustache and she goes dot dot dot. So I'm gonna guess I took a lift. <laughs>
She's like, LOL, LOL, that's amazing. By yourself or with someone you think? Let me ask Katie, have you talked to her yet? Katie was one of my friends that was at the Miley concert with me. It was her and her sister were the other two friends that we had met up with and then had left with, gotten kicked out of the first Uber and then gotten into the lift, which is presumably the one that I stole this mustache from. I don't know why I didn't reach out to Katie first because I don't even know if I really remembered seeing Lauren because I barely remembered getting to Busby's. I said, I can't imagine I went by myself. And this is the part of the conversation where I. I realized how drunk I was. I say, no, that I haven't talked to her. And I said, did she go to Busby's? And Lauren goes, how blacked out were you? And I was like, uh, <laughs> apparently pretty blacked out. By the way, people say you can't black out on beer. I beg to differ. So then she tells me, yes, you guys all came to Busby's because remember Lauren wasn't at the concert. We met up with her. So apparently I did remember seeing her enough that I was asking her, but then I didn't ask the person I was actually with in the Uber on the way there. I don't know. My logic doesn't make sense. She goes, they're not answering at Busby's. I'll call back in a little. No shit, they're not answering the phone. I appreciated her help, but I don't know why neither of us realized that that was going to be a wasted effort anyway. And then she goes, well, I just texted Annette, Austin, Jordan, and Katie covering all the bases. Annette's the one that I went to the concert with who I'd left my car at her apartment. Katie is my other friend that was at the concert with us. Jordan's her husband that we met up with and Austin's one of my other guy friends from high school. Now at least I had some feelers out to, you know, track down my phone and I think my dignity was long gone by this point. So I'm like, well, thank you. She goes, I really want either In-N-Out or chicken and waffles. Clearly I'm down for In-N-Out because it's me. But before we can go on our in and out excursion, we get an update. Some of her feelers have gone back to her and she lets me know. So you went home in a lift with Jordan Bergman and Katie. She's not sure about your phone though. Again, Jordan and Katie are married now, dating at the time, and they lived together in West Hollywood. Bergman, I think, lived near me, but and since Brentwood was like on the way out of Santa Monica and on the way to West Hollywood, I'm assuming I hopped in so we could split part of it because at the time, none of us had money. If you were even remotely going the same direction as someone, you were sharing and splitting the fare. So she says, I went home in a lift with Jordan Bergman and Katie. She's not sure about your phone though. I said, huh? Okay, is there any way for her to contact the lift? <laughs> she goes, I don't know, I just asked. Katie's gonna call. Literally, Lauren's just my messenger at this point. I said, okay, tell her thank you. Fuck me. <laughs> so then I messaged her that I'm about to leave and I get another update. She goes, I have good news for you. I said, what? She goes, okay, I'll tell you when you get here. So you better come fast. And I'm like, tell me now, did they have it? I'm not coming until you tell me. And she said, I hate you. And I said, fucking tell me. Ah, uh, okay, Uber has your phone. <laughs> Thank the fucking Lord. And then I was like, you mean Lyft? <laughs> She goes, they're gonna drop it off around 2 p.m. So I'm trying to have it so they drop it off at your place. And then she says, I don't know what it is. Uber or Lyft. Oh my God, thank you so much. And she says, okay, now come get me, bitch. We go to in and out soak up some of our hangover, discuss the night a little more and my lack of memory of it. And then I'm pretty sure we went back to Lauren's and she let me borrow her computer charger so I could go home and continue any of my further communications with people um, on my own computer rather than having to go to someone else's. My next Facebook message is with Jordan, which is my friend Katie's now husband at the time boyfriend, but they were the ones trying to track it down because we were the ones that all shared the car together. By now it's noon and I I message Jordan and say, oh, hello there. And he goes, hey there, pal. How's being phoneless? I said, I feel naked. I woke up so confused. Was I a huge mess or was it a discreet blackout? I never had like a drunk alter ego in college, but I feel like discreet blackout should have just been my name. <laughs> Although this was after college. So there's really, I, oh my God. Uh, he said, I had no idea you were fucked up at all. To which I say, I literally barely remember even being at Busby's. I don't think I remember being there at all, but I was trying to like make it seem like I kind of did. He laughs. I said, okay, well, I'm going to take a quick nap. This phone exchange is happening at too. I apparently needed to take a nap at this point to, you know, like help my body heal from the hangover I was nursing. I'm dying because I have to tell him I'm setting an online alarm clock for two because I do not own a clock. So at the end of the day, although I did originally think that I had lost like my phone, my car and my dignity, it only ended up being my dignity. What a journey. The funniest part about this story to me is there's not a whole lot to it. Like nothing really happens. It's just kind of like a series of like, oh my God, you're so dumb. Being able to read the messages and like, just to like see how I was actually handling it. And I was like, guys, was I so annoying? Did you guys like hate me? And all of them responded there, no, not at all. And my friend Lauren was like, I think you're just remembering your messes, but like everyone had them. We all just alternated and helped each other out on the nights that we weren't disasters. That's it for today's story, but time for some comments. If you missed my last video, first of all, you should go watch it right now because it's pretty entertaining if I do say so myself. It's about the time that I went on spring break a week after getting my appendix out because as you continue to learn with each new story time I post, responsibility is my middle name. But anyway, that was such a specific one that I felt like I just asked for like general crazy spring break stories. So uh, we'll get a little variety. 
Okay, let's begin with Sarah Clark. I needed my appendix out the week before the last week of classes my senior year of college. I felt sick in a way I've never felt before but it was Cinco de Mayo and my first year being 21 and legal, so I fought through the pain, and obviously had margaritas. I had my appendix out the next night, and four days after that, I went to my school's quad party, a school-sponsored end-of-year party on the last day of classes, after taking my hydros with four loco. 2013 was a weird time. Anyways, I don't recommend but don't regret it either. My friends wheeled me around in a wheelchair and I was high as fuck the whole day. I mean, when you're having a good enough time and you've had enough drinks, things don't hurt. This one's short, but it made me laugh so much. Ursin Mandeleev? Did I say that right? Hopefully? Ursin says, I dislocated my knee while twerking in the club, and then just popped it back in, cause I was drunk. I kept dancing all night and that morning I went to the emergency care, and they put a cast on my leg for two weeks. Lol. Oh god. Hope your knee made a full recovery and you're uh, back in the club twerking. Next we have Jay Bell who was really living her life like me and my friends lived ours. You know, like really responsibly. Ah, uh, spring break. So, spring break, approximately 2010 or so, a group of guys invited me to go to Port Aransas to the beach and stay at one of their family's beach houses. I was only good friends with one of the guys, and I kind of liked him, so I decided to go. So it's a several hour drive and as we approach Port Aransas, it becomes apparent that the dude lied and there is no beach house. They apparently just thought, fuck it, we will crash with this group of girls who I had never met, and I was not happy to be lied to and driven out all that way to have nowhere to stay but in a house with 20 other people who I don't know at all. So we went straight to the beach, and while I'm there, pissed off, and pretty much being ignored by my friends who brought me, I make friends with two guys and one of their dads or uncle, who also happened to live in San Antonio, and who are leaving to go home tonight. So yes, I decided to leave to go back home with a complete stranger, in a Corvette with a radar detector going 100 miles per hour the whole way. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking, but nothing happened, and he was actually a really nice guy. Then, I got locked out of my house because I wasn't supposed to be home for several days, so that was my one and only spring break adventure, and fuck those guys who brought me. I feel like this is the kind of story that everyone has from college where it's like, tell it to someone years later, you're like, oh my god, I can't believe I did that. But, um, you live and you learn. Okay, last one. We'll end things with Ava Castaneda, because she says that this is her time to shine. This is my time to shine. Last spring break, my friends and I went to Monterey, Mexico for a music festival, and one day before the festival, we decided to go out. While we were there, some guys offered us drinks, and we stayed with them for half of the night. My friend made out with one of them, and needless to say we partied really hard. By the end of the night, I couldn't find any of my friends, and we had to get into an Uber. I don't know how I managed to get all six of us into an uber but three of my friends were on the verge of throwing up and it was awful when we got to the hotel my friend started throwing up but that was very uncommon for her so i spent all night trying to help her but by like 5 a.m i was tired and she was going to take a shower so i let her in the bathroom turns out she passed out in the shower and woke up soaking wet lol we started getting ready for the festival but she was still feeling bad so we just gave her some pills and went to the festival the two hours we stayed she was just throwing up so we went to like the emergency tents they have at festivals and they gave her a shot but it didn't do anything so me and her decided to leave the festival and i got her to a hospital by that time we were sure the guys at the bar had drugged her and we didn't know what to do. She had to get an IV but the second day of the festival was hella awesome. Also, we slept in and almost missed our flight. We had to run through the airport as they kept calling out names through the speakers. Best spring break ever? Lol. I don't even know what to say about that one. That's how, that's like, that gave me anxiety to read. Again, glad you're okay. The stuff that medical tents must see at festivals, I cannot even imagine. This very much sounds like a story that one of my friends would tell. Okay, well, I think that's it. If you want to be featured in the next video, make sure you leave your story below on, um, I guess just like biggest mess of the morning after. Oh, or like maybe like uber horror stories. That would be good too. Or like if you've ever woken up with something weird in your room, like how I had the mustache, whatever speaks to you. Leave it in the comments below and maybe I'll read it in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and um, see you next time.